Good morning, everyone. It's our great pleasure to present our invited paper, Parallel Mining of Frequent Subtree Patterns, in the second LSGDA workshop. Since we are allocated 30 minutes for the talk and a QA, we will break this talk into two parts. The first part is presented by me, Da Yan, from the University of Alabama at Birmingham, about a new research direction that we are working on these days. The current work also falls into this category. Then, the second part will be presented by Wen Wen Chu from East China Normal University to elaborate a bit more on the details of the current work. Let's begin. I have been working on a category of distributed graph processing systems that adopt a so-called sync-like vertex programming paradigm, as pioneered by Google's Prego system published in Sigmund 2010. An example of a vertex-centric program is PageRank, where each vertex distributes its PageRank value along outgoing edges in each iteration, and so the bottleneck is communication for message shuffling. I have been focusing on proposing general techniques for reducing the I.O. bottleneck, such as graph partitioning and message reduction. We have been quite successful in this area with a number of works published. Please note that uh, Prago-like systems have an I.O. bound execution bottleneck. Our works have gained a lot of attention with systems being used by other researchers and the papers well cited. However, as this paper that we published in VRDB 2014 indicates, Prago-like systems are really designed for iterative algorithms where each iteration runs with a cost linear to the graph size, and the computation runs for a limited number of iterations. There is also a similar work that simulates Prago's message passing using MapReduce, and the conclusion is similar. In fact, most of those papers study graph problems with a low time complexity, such as computing connected components, page ranks, and single source shortest passes. In the domain of graph mining, the number of papers are relatively limited. In fact, graph mining problems are very diverse, and there is no one-size-fits-all solution. Some problems have low time complexity, such as computing k-core or page ranks. Others can have a very high time complexity, such as mining dense subgraphs from a big graph and mining frequent subgraph patterns from a graph database. As a breakthrough in this area, we have developed a distributed framework called G-Sinker for mining dense subgraphs. We have also developed a parallel framework called Prefix FPM for mining frequent patterns in general, which is the foundation of the current work. It is worth noting that the current excitement of big data systems are nothing more than building data-intensive frameworks where different data partitions can be streamed in parallel and messages can be exchanged in parallel. They are good for I.O. heavy operations, but the aggregate I.O. bandwidth utilized is often comparable or even less than the throughput of a single CPU core, as indicated in this post by Frank McSherry. Frank McSherry thinks that people are overexcited about big data systems, and people are developing systems with poor performance. My experience talking to researchers interested in big data systems is that some people simply get excited when hearing the word system, think that systems need a lot of time to develop, and thus novelty can be slightly compromised. Reviewers expect that the programming interface should be super simple even for algorithms that are complicated by themselves, and performance can be compromised for programming simplicity. We have to compare with many systems that are similar. And the best shot to get a paper accepted is to focus on simple toy algorithms so that programming can be presented in a simple manner. However, data-intensive frameworks have communication as a bottleneck, and the CPU calls are often underutilized. For example, if each data block generates an amount C of communication, and your network bandwidth is 2C, then, even if you have many CPU calls, 
you can at most fully utilize two CPU cores at a machine, which is a waste of resources for compute-intensive problems. A lot of problems are actually compute-intensive, where the workloads come from the exponentially large search space rather than the large data volume. If we address them using a data-intensive framework, we achieve a throughput that is similar to a couple of CPU cores on a single machine. In fact, things can get even worse, given that the network throughput can be much lower than that of a single CPU core, and the I.O.-bound execution slows down the entire process. For example, in this TKDD paper, the authors find that for triangle counting, their single-threaded algorithm is 10 times faster than the state-of-the-art MapReduce solution running with over 1,600 machines. The solution is to make the execution engine of a framework compute-intensive by itself. We have proposed a new paradigm called T-Sinker, or Task Sinker, which utilizes divide and conquer to achieve compute-intensive execution. The key insight is that a lot of problems can be represented as tasks, where a big task over a big dataset can be decomposed into independent tasks over smaller data subsets for parallel execution. So, if the data needed by a task is large enough, the linear cost of fetching the data into a local machine is well offset by the subsequent compute-intensive mining over the fetched data. And the concurrent execution of multiple tasks can hide the communication latency. Of course, task-based execution has been there in the HPC community for a long time. Our contribution should be that the programming model is easy for the targeted category of problems. However, existing pioneering frameworks in graph mining simply materializes and grows all potential subgraphs in the search space, the cost of which is prohibitive. Examples include the embedding-centric API of Arabisk that attempts to handle both dense subgraph mining that allows backtracking without subgraph materialization, and frequent subgraph mining that need pattern deduplication by subgraph isomorphism checking. Since the problems are quite different in nature, a unified design leads to the worst of both worlds. Our G-Sync system addresses dense subgraph mining problem by spawning tasks from individual vertices to grow candidate subgraphs for mining and the big tasks can be decomposed into smaller tasks to divide the workloads by multiple CPU cores. Since this talk focuses on the other system, prefix FPM, for parallel frequent pattern mining, we refer interested audience to our ICD 2020 paper for the details about G-Sinker. Without any Hi everyone, my name is Wen Wen Chu, and I'll present uh, the second part uh, to elaborate on how we find subtree patterns in parallel. First, uh, let me introduce uh, the important concept uh, used in frequent pattern mining. We will illustrate uh, the concepts using atom sets as uh, patterns. In this slide, we have a database of six transactions allocating the items that people buy from a supermarket. For this database, we would like to mine patterns in the form of item sets, where an item set with three elements is shown at the bottom. For pattern, we have the concept of pattern sets. In our atom set pattern, the set is 3 since we have 3 atoms in the set. If we check the atom set against the database, we can see that transaction 4 and 6 cover our atom set. And therefore, we see that the spot count of our pattern is 2. 
here is a recap of the concepts in frequent pattern mining. We have a database of transactions, and we want to find those patterns that are covered by a significant number of transactions in our database. We remark that the pattern type is not limited to item set. Depending on the database type, a pattern can also be a subsequence, a subgraph, or even a subtree. For example, in a database of chemical compounds, it would be interesting to find the frequent subgraph structures that often hence used for functionalities. As another example, we can also map subtree patterns from an XML file such as that of DBLP to capture patterns like frequent co-ordinates in a particular journal. It is also common to define constraints on desired patterns. In this slide, we show a tree structured transaction, and if we consider embedded pattern, which only requires the preservation of ancestral descendant relationship between those, then the pattern B, B, D is covered even though it is not an induced subgraph of the tree transaction. In fact, frequent pattern mining is NP-hard, and it is important to utilize all the CPU calls in a multi-core machine for effective pattern mining. Therefore, we aim to design a parallel framework that is able to keep all CPU calls busy in many frequent patterns. An important goal is to make our framework's programming interface general enough for many all kinds of patterns. We remark that the pattern of item set is special because there is no order over the items in a set. So we can use algorithms that define its own order for effective mining, such as the FP growth algorithm. However, we do not target this problem as it has been well addressed by Google's parallel FP growth algorithm which is shown at the top. We consider those patterns where it matters how the elements are ordered or connected. Our framework is designed based on the idea of prefix projection, the idea of which will be revealed shortly. Our framework is called prefix FPM, as we use prefix projection and uh, tackles general frequent pattern mining, or FPM in short. An important feature of prefix MPM is that uh, we consider algorithms that check patterns in the depth fruit orders of pattern growth. Let us now illustrate the idea of prefix projection by considering the problem of many frequent subsequence patterns from a sequence database. Here we can see that database D has four sequences. If we consider pattern A, then S4 is filtered as it has no A, and the underscored positions are those that match A. We call such a database as a project database, projected by pattern A. Now, if we group pattern A with one more element B, we only need to continue matching from the projected database of A. We will continue matching B starting from the underscore operations. This will give us the projected database of AB. We can further grow the pattern by C 
and check against the projected database of AB to find the rows sequence translations that contain pattern A, B, C. Prefix span actually checks the patterns in depth first pattern green order. Let us consider a sequence database where there are only three element types, A, B, and C. We will first grow an initial MPT pattern by A to obtain A's projected database. If it contains sufficient transactions, when consider A as frequent and outputted, we will then grow pattern A into AA, create its projected database from that of A. Assume that the projected database does not have sufficient transactions, so AA is infrequent. Then AA is proved, and we do not need to consider to grow AA further. After backtracking to pattern A, we will consider the next child pattern AB and assume that it is frequent. Then we will continue to check its child pattern ABA, ABB, and ABC. We will continue to check all the patterns in the first order of the pattern growth tree until all frequent patterns are found. The algorithm has several desirable features. Firstly, we only check a child pattern or its parent pattern's projected database, which gets smaller as the parent pattern grows in size. Secondly, we can prove the whole subtree in our pattern search trees once a pattern is found to be infrequent. Third, we will remember how a parent pattern is matched to each transaction so that the child pattern can continue its matching rather than starting from scratch. Finally, all child subtrees can be checked independently and are therefore amenable to parallel computing. We remark that uh, this prefix projection idea is not limited to many sequential patterns. For example, we can find uh, subtree patterns from a tree database in a similar manner by encoding each tree pattern into a sequential representation. This allows us uh, to run a prefix span style algorithm on encoded sub sequence pattern space. In the slide, uh, each tree is encoded using depth first pre-order node traversal, except that we need to add a dollar sign each time we backtrack. For example, for the first tree, we have B, A, B, dollar, D, dollar, dollar, B, dollar, C, dollar. Patterns are grown by extending one adjacent AG each time and not all adjacent edges need to be considered for extension. For example, we do not need to consider growing from node 2 in the slide since x is not on the right mode path. This is because our encoding is in depth first order, and an earlier encoding in DFS order should have considered that branch. Our prefix MPM framework adopts a task-centric computation model, where each pattern is associated with a task. The task will check if the pattern is frequent, and if so, it will grow the pattern by one more element to generate child patterns for further checking. If the projected database is big, Child patterns are wrapped into independent tasks, which are then added to a task queue to be fetched by other threads for many. Otherwise, the task is efficient to process by the current thread itself, so the thread will directly process it, 
in depth flood pattern cross order. The programming interface of prefix LPM is shown here, where we have a task based class whose user defined function that children indicates how to grow a parent pattern by one more element into child patterns. We will see how these UDFs are used in the next slide. This is also a worker-based class, which creates the initial set one pattern targets and puts them into task queue for concurrent processing. This is conducted by the set root function, which is also user defined. This slide shows how a thread process a task using the user defined functions. We are learn to further chess if we need to skip the current pattern, which is often used for if we have additional constraints on patterns. Then line 4 will generate child patterns and their project database. Each child pattern is then processed in the while loop, where line 7 checks if we should wrap child patterns into tasks for current processing. Otherwise, the current thread will call the same function in line 13 on the child pattern to check and grow it recursively. We made the task queue a stack so that uh, tasks are fetched in depth first priority. This strategy pri prioritizes all tasks to minimize memory footprint occupied by the project database that are being manned upon. Here, we illustrate how our parallel framework divide the pattern search space. For example, thread 1 could be processing pattern A, B. The next pattern in depth first order, which is A, C, is fetched and processed by thread 2. Thread 3 and thread 4 will then process the next two patterns in depth first order. Note that uh, the tasks may add more child pattern tasks into the current task queue, so that idle threads can then fetch them for processing. We also allow a pattern to be checked against a bigger project database in parallel, which is helpful initially when there are not many tasks to keep all the CPU code busy. In this work, we implement and compare two serial edge grams for many embedded subtrace patterns on top of our prefix MPM framework. The two edge grams are prefix tree span and tree manner. Prefix tree span is similar to prefix span. Here, a tree is encoded as we mentioned before where by tracking from a child is donated by minus 1. For example, T1 in D is encoded as B, A, C, E, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, A, B, minus 1, D, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. A prefix trace projects each data tree into a so-called postfix for it. For example, Give a prefix tree AB, we obtain two prefix trees in the for it after projection. To extend the AG from the red mode pass, we only check elements starting from red after the last matched operation in the data tree encoding. For example, when extending pattern tree A into AB for the projected instance of T1. The last match location is 7. Then we start a scan from position 8 for extension where B at position 8 
is then matched to the second pattern tree. The other algorithm, tree manner, uses a similar horizontal encoding for trees, but the projected transaction intents are represented using a pair of tree ID plus a scope. For example, for tree pattern A, it has two matches in tree T2, one at node 0, whose subtree covers scope from 0 to 7, and the other at node 4, whose subtree covers scope from 4 to 7. The scope is computed using pre-order depth fruit traversal, where the red motor node in the subtree defines the scope boundary. Scopes are used to decide if a new edge is a child extension below the last matched node, or a cousin extension from an ancestor node along the red mode path. Each pattern is associated with a list of such scopes, which acts as the pattern's projected database. Unlike a prefigured tree span, tree manner generates a size k plus 1 pattern from two size k patterns. Let's share the same size k minus 1 prefix encoding, which allows the pattern growth to be more selective. Each pattern p here is actually a size k minus 1 prefix. It can be extended by different ages, and to generate a projected data instance of a set k minus one pattern, we join the projected database of two set k patterns. Let's share the same prefix p, one extended with a g i x, and the other with a g g y. Here you can see that the pattern object p also maintains a list of child patterns, each with its projected database, for pairwise join. Each element in the child patterns here is the type of EQ node, which contains the value of child node and its parent position. The T list here is the projected database of the child node. Here is the user defined set children function for tree manner. P is a prefix of size k minus 1. Ix and gy are two different ages that extend from P. Q is a new generated pattern by add Ix gy based on P. The scope list of Q is contracted by joining the scope of I, X, and G, Y for use of the child tasks. Know that each task in tree manner keeps a list of projected database for the child patterns of prefix P, so the task granularity is one level bigger than those tasks in prefigured tree span. This actually compromises the degree of parallelism. In our experiments, we found that tree manner undoubtedly has a lower overall mining code, but when the parallelism becomes high, such as more than 8 threads, it can sometimes be beaten by prefigured tree span where a task only handles one pattern rather than a list of child patterns. We have open sourced our code on GitHub with detailed documentation, and you are welcome to check it out. Thank you for your attention, and now I'm ready to take questions.